Okay, in this video we're going to finish up section 7.4 and our last topic is the area of a surface of revolution. Um, so definition here in the blue box, if the graph of a continuous function is revolved about a line, the resulting surface is a surface of revolution. Uh, in the last video we talked about arc length, so we maybe we found the length of this line segment. And to go from just an arc to a surface of revolution, uh, we're going to just rotate that line, that arc, about an axis of revolution and create a solid surface. And here's some of uh, the calculus gar or uh, mumbo jumbo that goes behind it. In essence, if we just take uh, right here is our formula for the uh, arc length. We have our integral from a to b of a uh, square root and under the radical is 1 plus the derivative squared. That's our arc length formula. To change that into a surface area formula, we just put a 2 pi out front of the integral sign and r of x is our distance from the axis of revolution or our radius. If we're with respect to the y axis, you know it's 2 pi integral from c to d r of y and then our radical 1 plus the derivative g prime of y uh, quantity squared. So uh, example 5. Find the area of the surface formed by revolving the graph of f of x equals x to the third on the interval from 0 to 1 about the x-axis. So the x to the third between 0 and 1 is in the first quadrant opening upward almost like a parabola. We're going to cr create that uh, arc and then spin that arc around the x-axis. Uh, so, first thing we of course we're going to need is our derivative f prime of x and the derivative of x to the third is 3x squared. And let's write the formula out here. Uh, S for surface area equals 2 pi and then we'll have our integral from a to b and we need r of x. r of x is just our distance from the axis of rotation and then we'll have our square root of 1 plus the derivative squared f prime of x quantity squared and don't forget the dx. So let's start plugging in the numbers from our problem. Surface area equals 2 pi. Uh, our integral is going to run from 0 to 1. r of x is our distance from the axis of rotation. Our axis of rotation happens to be the x-axis, so our distance away from our axis of rotation is just given by the function. Here's our curve for the x to the third. How far away are we from our axis of rotation? Well that's just how far are we away from the x to the third function. So r of x is x to the third. And then we're going to have our radical and under the radical 1 plus our derivative 3x squared that quantity squared dx. So let's work under that radical and uh, simplify it a little bit, try to get ready to integrate here. And we have our x to the third and let's change that into a rational exponent notation. We're going to have our 1 plus 3x squared quantity squared is 9x to the fourth and that's all now to the one-half power dx. Alright, it looks like we're going to do a u substitution here. Here is our inner function. We're going to let u equal 1 plus 9x to the fourth. So du would be, uh, if we derive that, 36x to the third dx. So we have our u to the one half. We need a 36 x to the third. We only have just the plain old x to the third. So what we're going to have to do is tweak on the right of the integral sign with a 36 and to balance it out front a 1 36th. It's reciprocal. So 
let's see here, that's going to turn into a 1 18th pi, 2 times, or 2 pi times 1 over 36 is 2 pi over 36, or pi over 18, and it looks like we're ready to integrate. Uh, we have our u to the 1 half, we have our du to integrate with, so we're going to raise the power by 1, 1 plus 9x to the 4th, to the 3 halves power, and we would divide by the 3 halves power, or multiply by the reciprocal, 2 thirds. And we are integrating that from uh, 0 to 1. And let's see here, uh, 2 thirds times pi over 18, we can reduce on the diagonal, that'll turn into a 9. We're going to have pi over 27, is that right? Pi, yeah, pi over 27. And let's plug in our upper limit, 1. So we're going to have 9 times 1 to the 4th, plus 1 is 10. We're going to have 10 to the 3 halves. Minus, plug in the 0. Uh, 1 plus 9 times 0 to the 4th is 1. 1 to the 3 halves. And if we punch that into the computer, or our uh, T89, we're going to get about 3.56. And remember, this is a surface area. That would be some kind of squared units, whatever our units happened to be. Uh, last example, example 6. Find the area of the surface formed by revolving the graph of f of x equals x squared on the interval from 0 to the root of 2 about the y-axis. So here's our picture, here's our um, x squared function going up, and we're integrating from uh, 0 to the square root of 2, or it looks like here. Uh, and then we're going to rotate that arc around the y-axis, creating sort of like a bowl shape here. Uh, let's see, so our surface area is 2 pi integrated from a to b, and it's r of x times r radical 1 plus the derivative f prime of x quantity squared dx. Okay, so we start filling in our numbers, 2 pi. Uh, we are going to integrate here uh, from 0 to the square root of 2 on the x-axis. 0 to the root of 2. r of x is our distance from our axis of rotation. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, how far away are we from our axis of rotation? Remember, we're rotating around the y-axis, and here is our function. So this kind of looks more like uh, something we've seen more with the shell method. How far away are we from our axis of rotation, the y-axis? Well, that's simply just our x-coordinate. So in this case, it's not the function that tells us how far we are away from the axis of rotation we are. It's just the x-coordinate uh, that we're plugging in at the time. And then we have our radical, 1 plus. Our function f of x was x squared, so its derivative, f prime of x, is 2x. 2x quantity squared dx. And let's work under that radical. And let's change, well, let's even change that radical to a rational exponent. So we're going to have 1 plus 2x quantity squared is 4x squared, and that is to the half power. Okay, it looks like a u substitution. So let's see here if we let what's in the parentheses equal our u. u is equal to 1 plus 4x squared. Uh, the derivative, du dx, and then multiply both sides by dx, we're going to have 8x dx. Do we have an 8x dx? No, we have x dx. So we are going to need to tweak it with an 8 and a 1 8 out front. 
So it looks like we're ready to integrate. Uh, an eighth times 2 pi is 2 pi over 8, or a fourth pi. And then we're going to take our quantity and raise it by 1. Uh, 1 plus 4x squared to the 3 halves power divided by 3 halves or times 2 thirds. And actually, let's put the 2 thirds out with the quarter pi. Uh, and we're integrating that from 0 to the root of 2. Okay, out front, 2 thirds times a quarter pi. Uh, we can reduce on the diagonal and get pi over 6. And let's see what happens when we plug in our square root of 2. Square root of 2 squared is 2, times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. 9 to the 3 halves power, minus, plug in the 0, that wipes out this term, and we're left with 1 to the 3 halves. Uh, so we have pi over 6. Let's see, 9 to the 3 halves power, that's the square root of 9 to the 3rd. So we can break that up into a 9 squared times 9. Bring out the 9, the square root of 9 is 3. 9 times 3 is 27. And then minus 1. So we get 26 times pi over 6, or 26 pi over 6. Or we can reduce down to 13 pi over 3 and even get the decimal 13.614. And that's a surface area, so it would be units squared. And that's the end of uh, section 7.4, arc length and surface area.